All right, let's start by talking about multiple regression. Multiple regression is really the extension of the simple regression case, and it uh, has a lot of uh, features that are in common. And hopefully, uh, by talking about it a little bit more and using some of the intuition that you've built up uh, by studying the uh, simple regression, uh, the multiple regression concepts will be uh, somewhat familiar and uh, easy to uh, remember. Let's go to the whiteboard where I've got written down a multiple regression equation in kind of a general form. So we have a dependent variable y, which we're trying to explain by a, uh, a set of uh, k uh, independent variable x's. We have uh, actually uh, k plus 1 coefficients because we're going to include a constant term, which has a uh, coefficient uh, b0. And b0's interpretation is the uh, intercept in this uh, multidimensional line that we're uh, drawing. And it also has the interpretation that if we set all of the x variables simultaneously equal to 0, it's what value the y variable would take on or your dependent variable would take on. The b coefficients, uh, 1 through k, are going to be the so-called slope coefficients on the, uh, on, of the regression. And they tell you the response of the uh, dependent variable to changes in the, uh, in the independent variable x's. Um, Finally, we've got the error term on the end, which is basically the unexplained part of the, uh, of the y that is not explained by any of the uh, movements in the x's or by the intercept term. So the multiple regression is really the uh, equation of a multidimensional line or a line through n-dimensional space. If it helps you think about it, think about the uh, uh, three-variable case where you have a uh, line in, uh, in three dimensions uh, going through space somehow. But it's a multidimensional line, so we're again looking at the linear relationship between a dependent variable and a bunch of other uh, uh, independent variables that we think explain the variation in the dependent variable. Now, uh, multiple regression rests on a set of six assumptions, uh, and you may remember some of these assumptions uh, when you learned about the simple regression case. I'm going to go over them and talk about uh, their application in the multiple regression case, but they're really analogous to the assumptions that we used in simple regression. So if you remember that, then these should be familiar to you. The first assumption is the assumption of linearity that re the relationship between y, the dependent variable, and the set of independent variables, x1 through xk, is linear. Now, this is a lot less restrictive than you might think because there are lots of tricks that we can use to uh, set the, uh, uh, to take a, a nonlinear relationship and turn it into a linear relationship. Uh, in particular, we can take, uh, use a lot of uh, logarithm transformations to, uh, uh, linearize a, an otherwise nonlinear system of variables. Uh, an example of that is, say, a, uh, a Cobb-Douglas production function uh, where you take capital and uh, raise it to an exponent and multiply it by labor raised to another exponent. Well, if you take the logs of those, then you get uh, the exponent times capital plus the exponent on labor times labor. So you've linear, linearized your production function simply by taking logs. So there are lots of ways around this uh, linearity restriction uh, if you're willing to be a little bit creative and use things like logarithms. Uh, the second assumption is that the independent variables are not random. And that one always seems, uh, always seems to uh, be quite restrictive. And, uh, and indeed, it, it, it is a little bit overly restrictive in the sense that uh, we're making this assumption to try to make the uh, statistical inference a little bit easier. In the case in which the independent variables are, are, are indeed random, we still get the same uh, general flavor of the results that I'm going to be talking about in terms of hypothesis testing and inference, but it, it's a lot more difficult to uh, actually prove the, these results statistically. So for now, we assume that the independent variables are not random. And another way of thinking about that, uh, and another way it's been described, is by saying that the x variables are all fixed in repeated sampling. So it's almost like you're taking uh, samples of uh, this dependent variable over time, and uh, uh, and uh, you're fixing the x's and kind of looking at the same group of x's but seeing how y changes over time as you uh, fix, the, uh, fix the samples of those. The, the rest of the assumptions are all about the error term. And as you might uh, imagine, the error term is really where we're going to get most of the statistical inference uh, that drives the uh, multiple regression model. So we're going to be very careful about what we uh, specify in terms of making assumptions about that error term. The first assumption is that, w that we make is that the expected value of the error term is zero for every observation. Now, I'm using the subscript t here 
uh, to index these. And we often use T uh, as a subscript to index um, the observations when we're using time series data. Uh, we could also use the subscript I, or we commonly use the subscript I when we're using cross-sectional data. But you could also use T to sub to, uh, as a subscript to index uh, cross-sectional data. So it really doesn't matter uh, which subscript you use. It's, uh, uh, this is just a common one that uh, researchers use with time series data. The fourth assumption is that the expected value of the squared error term is equal to sigma squared for all T. Uh, now notice that this is really a statement about the variance of the error term. Since the expected value is already assumed to be zero, then uh, to find the variance of the error term, all we need to do is find the expected value of the squared uh, error term. And so we're setting that equal for all t. And that is an extremely important uh, assumption, and we're going to revisit that in a little while when we talk about the problems that you may encounter when you are running multiple regressions. The fifth assumption, likewise, is also very important. What it tells us is that there is no uh, correlation between different uh, error terms. So the uh, expected value of epsilon uh, t times epsilon s, where s is not equal to t, is going to be equal to zero. Now, when s is equal to t, uh, then we get the case in which uh, we have assumption four, eps the expected value of epsilon t squared or epsilon s squared is going to be equal to sigma squared for all t, which includes s, of course. Finally, uh, we're assuming that the error term is normally distributed, and I'm uh, going ahead and uh, substituting in what I know from my previous assumptions, that the mean of the errors is assumed to be zero, and the variance of the errors is assumed to be sigma squared. So we're making uh, two-thirds of our assumptions about the distributional properties of the error term. And so those are going to be very important for us. And when we look for problems in the regressions, we're really going to be looking for violations of these assumptions. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, the, uh, the uh, assumption, uh, violations of assumption two are really not that uh, terribly uh, are, are, not, are not terribly important. They're not terribly troublesome. Uh, the violation of linearity assumption is actually somewhat troublesome and can bias your results if you're trying to impose a linear relationship on variables that really aren't, uh, that don't really have a linear relationship. So these are the assumptions. They should be f somewhat familiar to you if you remember uh, uh, what you've learned about simple regression. From here, what we're going to do is write out some, uh, just to go right to the uh, regression results and start interpreting the regression results based on uh, the information that is commonly given to us once we use a statistical program or maybe even a spreadsheet to do a regression estimation for us. So if we look at the board, I've got written down a, uh, a typical uh, regression that you might possibly want to estimate. The, the dependent variable is a return of some kind. Maybe it's the return on the S&P 500 index. What I'm going to do is try to explain that with a, uh, an intercept. And I'm going to use the de independent variables of earnings growth, the bond return, or a bond return, and expected inflation. So I've got these written out to remind us of what these are. So this is our x1 variable. This is our x2 variable. This is our x3 variable. So uh, I, I get, gather some data and enter it into my statistical program or spreadsheet, and I estimate my regression. And typically, I'll get a uh, table of results that looks like something below. It'll report the variable. So I've got an intercept, which uh, it corresponds to this constant term, plus earnings. So uh, that's my x1 variable, my x2 variable of bond return, and the uh, x3 variable of expected inflation.